Hey, my name is Derek Killam. I'm with Intune Music and Sound, and I want to encourage you uh, to come on in the store, say hi. We'd love to see what's going on in your world. Uh, a couple of things we want to share with you. You probably know that we sell instruments, that we uh, rent instruments to beginners, but I don't know if you know that we have full service repair shops. Uh, these shops are set up in both our Midland, Odessa, and Abilene locations. You're welcome to come in anytime if you're worried about your horn. We'll look at the horn, assess it, give you an estimate. There's no charge to do that. We just like to see and, and make sure everything's going well for you. And if that's one of the services we can offer, then we want to do it. Uh, I do want to encourage you, though, if you didn't know, there's some things that you can do yourself. And uh, one of those things is oiling the valves on a brass instrument. Now, I have a cornet in my hand. I'm most comfortable with that. That's what I play. And uh, the process is the same on the cornet as it is for a baritone, as it is for a tuba, as it is for any instrument that has pistons like this. So uh, I want to help you get comfortable with this process. And you know, a lot of people do this and then they find out that it's not playing right. So I'm going to show you a few things that you can check to make sure that we get the horn apart and together the correct way. What do we need to get started? Well, obviously, you're going to need your horn, whether that's a cornet, a tuba, baritone, whatever you have, make sure you have the instrument. One thing I want to encourage you to do, get some paper towels. Uh, sometimes when you're dealing with oil, you'll have some spills or some drops that, that fall and go different directions. If you'll make sure that you put some paper towels down, you'll keep everybody happy. We won't stain anything, all right? And obviously, you're going to need some oil. This is Intune Valve Oil. Uh, we keep this stuff around all the time. It's, it's uh, it's uh, very economical for you and it does a great job. So I've got my oil, I've got my horn, I've got an area cleaned off ready to go, so let's get started. The first thing I want to teach you about, uh, if you don't know the names, then what you're looking at here are your pistons or your valves, and these are numbered, one, two, three, okay? You probably already knew that, but I'm just, I'm gonna tell you that for a reason. They sit inside this, this valve casing, and the, the way you take them out, there's a cap here, and it's threaded, you just loosen that cap, and now don't take it all the way out because I want to show you something. I'm going to lift that up, and on this piston, this one is on the front side of the piston, there's a number. This is number one. That's my first piston, and it's labeled for me. It's stamped on there. That's a great thing. Note the direction that it's stamped. It's either going to be directly away from you or facing you. On this instrument, this is a, a king it's facing away from me. See this little white piece here? It's called a valve guide. It, it's on both sides. One side is different than the other. There's a reason. When this goes back in the horn, there's slots inside that casing that that fits in. It keeps it from spinning. What that does is you'll notice there's, there's holes in that valve and that piston. They line up with the tubes on your instrument. Those valve guides get it to the right place and then you can tighten it back down and it keeps the air moving free, okay? If you get this reversed, the air won't go through the horn correctly. That's what people, they say, well, all I did was take them out and put them back in and now my horn doesn't play. It's probably because you don't have that in the right direction. So before you take everything out, make sure you look for that number, remember which side of the valve it's on, look at the valve guides, and make sure it fits in back snug when you put it back in. All right. I never take my valves all the way out of the instrument when I'm oiling them. Let me tell you something else too, I've seen this happen a lot. I would, went all the way through junior high and high school and college just like you, and I used to watch guys do this. There's a bottom cap on the valve as well, it's got a hole in it. And they'd get in a hurry and they'd say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to squirt some oil in the bottom. Doesn't work. There's a hole in the bottom of your valve. Basically all you do is fill up the inside of your, your piston with oil, you never get to the part that needs to be oiled. So don't do that, it's a, it seems like an easy, quick shortcut, but it doesn't work. So I pull that out far enough where I can see, you'll notice the top part of this is smaller than the actual surface area down here on the piston that has the holes in it. That's the part that's gonna rub metal on metal, that's the part you need to make sure gets oiled. So I'm gonna get my valve oil, I'm not taking that completely out, and I'm just gonna drop a couple of drops on there. I make sure that my, my uh, numbers align the right direction, my valve guides, I just insert it far enough and spin it till it won't it till it locks in, you'll feel it click in. And then I line up my threads, tighten the top valve cap down, smooth, easy. 
You repeat the process. If you've got a four valve instrument, you're gonna have to do it four times. If you've got a three valve instrument, you do it three times. Simple process. Bet you didn't know you could do it yourself. All right, see you next time.